Well, afternoon, YouTube. Tennessee's weather is on one today. The last couple of days, it's been in the upper 60s, low 70s, just t-shirt shorts, dang near sunburning kind of weather. And today, um, it's opposite. It's in like the mid 40s and kind of breezy and windy a little bit. But anyway, decided to do something a little bit different. Got away from the carp fishing thing for a little bit. Well, taking a break from it and decided to come up here to the mountains. One of the little smallmouth slash trout streams that I used to fish a lot in some of my older videos and hadn't been up here in a couple of months. So they recently stocked it, like semi-recently. I think it's been a little over two weeks. So in theory, there should still be some trout in here. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of stuff down here and just kind of spot hop and hopefully catch a couple because I wouldn't mind keeping a couple of trout. I don't know that I will, but anyway, let's get rigged up and see what all we can catch. Yeah, it is a little, little bit windy up here today so hopefully we don't have no trees fall on us and those are some big old dog or something other tracks but hey i actually have a net with me for a change probably won't use it knowing my luck but then again i could i don't know you never know you just don't never know and we're not going to carry around a whole bunch of crap with us this is just a mule fishing box with a bunch of jig heads some spinners, a bunch of different plastics, and some pre-rig stuff. Got quite a bit of current right now, so there ain't no telling what is or isn't going to bite. Hey, we caught something and we lost something. There is some trout in here. That was a decent sized rainbow. It's good to know. It is good to know. Of course, this hook that I'm using probably ain't gonna help me too much because it's more of a BFS sized EWG hook. So I may just switch over to a plain jig head here in just a little bit, and see how much that helps. But yeah, this is the Mule Fishing Supply Company tackle box. You can put it in your back pocket or just in a little fanny pack pouch type thing. You got one side that's good for, you know, pre-rig stuff, you know, things like that. And especially with mule fishing baits, you kind of want them to stay together or away from other plastics because they're like elastic. If they come in contact with other plastics like Zoom or whatever, they will melt but anyway uh let's see here this ain't a mule bait that i've got tied on here or had tied on here so i'm gonna keep you kind of separated and let's just go right ahead go to the other side where you can keep your terminals your hard baits whatever you want to do i'm going to go with a 132nd ounce chartreuse head and hmm screw it let's just go with a chartreuse body that is a 1.2 mule mina fish oh that's a scrappy one let's get my net and reel in some line before this one gets off and 
and we got us one. All right, the fish is being moody. There we go. Real pretty fish. Let's get you back. Skadooshy. All right. Now I'm tangled up in a tree. That was a big trout. Pretty sure that got on got on the camera. But that was a huge trout. Alright, finally got our leader tied on. This ultralight line and a breeze don't exactly go well together, but since this water is so clear and these trout, while they're they're dumb. They're just not dumb, dumb. I'm going to make my leader quite a bit longer. I usually go at least a rod length, but in this case, I'm going to make it about, this is a six foot rod. I'm going to make my leader about 10 foot. That way I've got more line to help with rubbing against the rocks and stuff like that, but keeps my high vis braid from being seen. Not that, you know, not that high vis line really makes that much of a difference, but me personally, it's a comfort thing. It's a better safe than sorry thing. I would feel better about having a fluorocarbon leader than using just straight high vis. Now, in a lot of cases, if they're biting good, it doesn't matter what color your line is, and I just took myself. But yeah, in a lot of cases, if they're biting really good, it doesn't matter what color line you're using, they're going to bite. All right, now we've got a 1.2 mil minnow, Dakota Sunrise on just a, I believe, 16th ounce jig head. And my battery is about to die, so I better change that out real quick. Well, it doesn't appear that anything in this little section here wants anything I've got. So we're gonna move on to the next spot. I would toss around up here on the other side of this uh, this down tree, but that's rockier than this mess right here. So we're gonna give that one a pass and move up to the next spot. And hopefully nobody's already there because it's kind of off the, off the beaten path more or less. All right, third spot. Not gonna spend a whole heck of a lot of time here because I don't do too good but you never know oh that is a fish I don't know what it is it's probably a trout where's my net because it feels like a pretty good fish net is in the water and it's floating away <laughs> i'm trying to drag my net up here on the the ground and fight this fish at the same time But it's a pretty good fish, whatever it is. Of course, I'm also fighting against current. And my foot is getting wet. This is a decent fish, y'all. All right. We got the net. I'm gonna prop it up against the tree back here. Fish is still on. This is a pretty good fish, y'all. And dang it, I'm clumping the trees above me.
it may not be as big as it appears to be because i'm fighting in so much current but i do have to baby it a little bit because i've only got six pound braid and a six pound fluorocarbon leader on here so i can't can't wrestle it too much And give it two clicks on the drag maybe i can gain some ground oh wait a minute wait a minute that is not a trout I do want my net because I don't want to get off. Oh, crap. There we go. There we go. Think he wanted that mule jig? It's a pretty little smallmouth. That was a lot of trouble for you. You know what? Let me get my line straightened up there. See if I can get you out. That was not hooked as bad as I thought it was. But that is a good smallmouth for this creek. It's probably pound pound and a quarter or so let's get that one back that one was stressed enough from fighting against that current and then me dragging it around well i doubt there's another fish down there that wants to do that but best bet we're gonna give her a give her a what for you know can't help but wonder how many times you and I have walked across creek beds or river beds like this and walked right over a arrowhead or gold even. I have in my 37 years on this rock never found a single arrowhead in the wild. You gotta be damn kidding me. I thought this was leaves at first. There is confetti, like some kind of gender reveal <laughs> all over this. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> this here's ridiculous. I would like to catch people doing that kind of crap. There right there is why places get shut down. They get closed up because people trash everything, leave their laying everywhere. And right here, even worse. Somebody, some sorry, no good low life, left this campfire going, and there's still hot embers, even a flame in that. Yeah, I know this ain't going to do much, but. Yeah, people are absolutely pathetic. I lose faith in humanity every single day. And that little campfire right there, basic freaking knowledge should tell you 
put that crap out before you leave it and that could set this whole forest on fire and it's not like they don't have enough problems with forest fires and brush fires and stuff right now as it is well y'all i'm calling it quits seems like the more i try to fish up here this afternoon or this evening the more frustrated i get from catching or hooking into fish them coming off snagging and breaking off gear and other issues with the gear it's just been one thing and another and then walking up to this spot and seeing all that confetti all over the bank down here like i don't understand people i don't understand how they think this doesn't hurt anything i don't understand why they just come up here and leave trash everywhere without a care in the world like i understand with some river systems and stuff stuff floating down river from you know elsewhere but this is not in the water this is well it'll eventually be in the water if it rains hard enough but this is up in the woods it was deliberately left there on top of a freaking campfire with a open flame still going which i took the one piece that was still on fire and tossed it in the creek so that got took care of and the rest of it there was just smoldering embers i put a bunch of dirt over it and kicked a bunch of the rocks that were around it over it and stomped it out and all that so that was took care of no thanks to anybody else that you know could have done it before they left i know there's going to be a lot of people that probably think oh that ain't no big deal it's that wasn't going to do nothing you're just overreacting well no i'm not overreacting i'm just so fucking tired of people and shit like this people this shit and don't care and you can only pick up shit around here to clean up your waterways before you get sick of doing that you know i would like for these kind of places to be open for future generations but when people carelessly trash a place leave fires going that could start a damn forest fire as if we don't already have enough issues with that as it is. This is why I'm sick of people.